Hey everyone, Rodney here at Cleves Tech, and today I'm gonna to be discussing inpainting in Focus and some advanced tips on using it. Inpainting, and for anyone not familiar, is just the process of regenerating a portion of an image that you may not like. Why redo the whole image if most of it is how you want it? Often we can get the results you want with just a basic inpainting and not have to tweak things, but sometimes you just can't get what you want. And I'm gonna to try to show you some tips on how to get better results from inpainting. If you're not familiar with inpainting in Focus or Stable Diffusion, I do recommend watching my other video that does cover the basics of inpainting because I'm not gonna cover every aspect of it. I'm gonna assume anybody that's watching this has a general idea of what they're doing with inpainting. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna start off one that I was working on last night that I couldn't get what I wanted out of it no matter how many times I tried regenerating. And then I remembered, now I don't need to keep doing that. So I generated this image last night of a girl and a skeleton sitting on a swing, but I wasn't happy because I wanted the legs of the skeleton hanging off the swing and I wanted the skeleton wearing a dress to go with a, another image that I'd already done. So we have our inpainting section open in focus down here and we drag the image in and normally then I would just say, okay, well, we'll just mask off that area because that's the area that I didn't like the results of. And we're gonna go ahead, I have the prompt in here, what I want and we just go ahead and hit generate now sometimes when you do it you get the results that you want pretty quickly but sometimes if anybody that's done in painting quite a bit knows no matter how often you keep trying and keep trying and keep trying you do not get the results that you want so we just sit here and we just keep skipping and we keep skipping and i see it's trying to put the legs but it just can't seem to get those legs over the edge that it just doesn't want to work so we just sit here and we wait and we keep trying. Well, I'll show you how this sort of thing can be done much easier. So we're gonna hit stop. We're gonna leave everything as we have here with the impainted area. I'm gonna leave the prompt the same, but now what I'm gonna do is go into the advanced section, check off the developer debug mode here, and you're gonna be in the inpaint section. Now, once you're in here, you're gonna have all these sliders. I'll just run down real quick what some of this stuff does. For general idea, I'm not gonna to dive too deep into explaining some of these. So the invert mask would do the opposite. So this would replace everything but the area that I painted. You can also enable a mask upload and create your own masks and upload them. The mask erode or dilate determines any area around it. So if we go lower, it decreases the painted area. And if we go higher, it increases it and expands it. Um, we're not gonna be messing with those. The inpaint respective field determines how much of the area that it uses to influence the inpainting and everything. We're gonna be leaving that just as is at the moment. I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna jump into that a little bit on my next image to give you some idea of how that impacts things. But the biggest one we're gonna be looking at here is inpaint denoising strength. Now, by default, the inpaint denoising strength for the standard inpaint outpaint is basically 100%, which tells it that it wants to regenerate that whole area. You do have other options in here that do change these settings. And one thing I do want to mention with the improved detail, because I see a lot of people don't fully understand this, this does have to do with the denoising strength as well and why it works the way that it does. So a lot of times, let's say you were to put this over a hand and then put in detailed hand, it increases the detail of that hand. So it zooms in, it does a higher resolution, creates it, and then reduces the resolution and puts it back into your image. The problem is, a lot of people don't realize is, if you have a six-fingered hand, it's still gonna improve it to a six-finger hand. It's just gonna be a higher detailed six-figure hand because, because of the denoising strength, it's still influenced by the extra fingers. So that's just so you understand how that works. We're gonna go back to the in-paint, out-paint because that's what we're dealing with here. But the denoising strength is what we're working on here. We wanna be able to use what's on that image to influence the re outcome. But we're not gonna use the original image because if I were to reduce that now, that, that would make it worse because it's gonna, there's no legs here. There's nothing for it to base that off of that I want. Changing that denoising strength here is actually, is gonna make it worse for us. So what you wanna do is what I've done is I went ahead in GIMP and I painted in just a blue area, some white, and then some black marks for legs, 
just to give it a general idea. You don't have to do a lot of detail. Obviously, if you want to, you can. You might get a little better results. You won't have to tweak it as much, but there's really no requirement to spend a lot of time. That took me all of about 30 seconds to do. So once I have that image, then I take that and I drop it down into the in-painting area, as you can see here. So now I haven't changed the mast area. What happens is when I use this to adjust the denoising strength, I'm gonna tell it, to, it, it can, that it can use part that image below to reference and to influence the final image. Now, if I were to go ahead and put this real low, under 50%, probably anything under there, you're not gonna get that drastically different results from what we're seeing. I'll go ahead and show you just so you'll get an idea of how that works. So we just have this on um, 0.3 at the moment, roughly. I'm gonna go ahead, I'll hit generate on that. And as we see, it's not really changing much because we've set that denoising strength pretty low. So we're telling it not to change the underlying picture that much. And so it's not gonna change it. We're gonna end up with these really, really badly drawn skeleton legs. So we're gonna go ahead and stop that. We're gonna increase this up even higher. The amount that you want this on, there's no set number. You'll have to tweak it a little bit. You're gonna to have to adjust that and play around with it. But we're gonna start off with, let's go with uh, 0.75 is usually where I start off with, with a lot of these. And we do have our original imaging down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit generate again. Now we can see it's, it's influencing the blue dress. That's definitely taking into account but we're not getting those legs that we wanted. So let's skip this one and see if the next one will do it. No. So what that tells me is we probably need to lower the denoising strength a little bit. So that original image that I have in there has more influence. So let's um, lower that down a little tiny bit. As we can see here, it's now influencing that image at a much greater level. I'm not a big fan of that one, so I'm going to go ahead and hit skip. Okay, and we now have our images generated. And now these didn't come out as good as I would like, so I would continue generating. But what I could do at this point, what I would probably do is take one of these images that came out halfway decent, uh, bring that back down in here. And then I would Continue at that point, just in painting the sections that I think could be improved and leaving the other sections. At this point, I can also, I could probably change that denoising strength because I've already got enough influence in here that I can have it regenerate completely. Okay. At this point, I would continue going through, improving, finding the best one and working from there. So that gives you a general idea of how that can be used by adjusting that denoising strength to allow what is underneath it to influence the image. Okay, for our next image, I'm gonna use, um, well, I generated one here earlier that I'm gonna be using for this. If we were to just put this down in here and try to regenerate, I'm not gonna go through demonstrating that at the moment, but getting a green apple, if I were to just mask this off and do the whole masking, and then asking for a green apple. I'm not very likely to get what I want, and I sometimes will, but instead of continually just keep trying to generate and get what you want, sometimes it just makes more sense to instead influence what you want. Now, I'm gonna go into the same thing here. We're gonna go back into the developer debug mode under the in-painting, and instead of using this image, now, I, I do wanna explain one thing. It it's hard to show, but that, in paint respective field that we were talking about the if we set it to zero it's only going to take care of the mast area that'll zoom in it's the same as the improved detail it only accounts for that one area and it doesn't take in the whole image or anything else if we slide this way up then it's the opposite it takes in the whole image it won't do any of the upscaling or anything like that i'm actually going to be using this in that mode only because when I record, it's very hip difficult. When I go to upscale, a lot of times it ends up freezing up when I'm recording, whenever it does upscaling. So I just want you to understand what that does. And, and you'll see it when I go to generate this, how this works. Instead of it zooming in on just a section, it's gonna handle the whole image. So we're gonna adjust this just like we did before. 
We're gonna change that denoising strength. Now, if I were to just go ahead as I did previously, now that's not gonna work. So I went ahead and I did a really good painting of a green apple. And then I'll just mask that area again. Okay, we have everything set. Yes. Now what'll happen this time instead of normally what will happen a lot of times when you impaint, it will go through an upscaling mode because it's dealing with a small portion because that impaint respective field. And if you only select a small area, but in this example, I went ahead and I changed that to one. And because of that, it's gonna use that whole image. As you can see here, it's showing the whole image while it's working. If I would have done it the other way, it would have actually zoomed in on it and just worked on that smaller area of the image. Now I'm primarily doing this because when I'm recording, if it goes into an upscale process, sometimes my system just gets stuck and I have to reboot and everything. So I prefer to avoid that at the moment. And we're gonna get similar results to what we would have gotten anyways, which is what I wanna demonstrate. And see all that came out pretty well. I'm not a fan of this one, but I didn't specify whether it had to be upright or not. I just did it with basic painting. I've seen people take images of hands and use those and paint them or paste them into their images. You, you can be really creative with using that denoising strength to help in, you know influence what's gonna end up happening. So even if your art skills aren't that great, as we can see here, I'm not really that good at drawing a hat, but with the right tools, that doesn't matter. So remember, you're impainting Denoy's strength. The lower you go, the less it's gonna change that underlying image, but the more influence it'll have. And the higher you go, the more it'll change that underlying image and the less influence it'll have. Now, hopefully this helps improve your impainting and reduces the number of times you need to regenerate. And if you found the video helpful, please do consider clicking the like button or even buying me a coffee. And until next time, have fun creating.